Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and you are watching a video on sequences. This is a geometric sequences with a compound interest context. Now, if you're interested in compound interest and you're wanting to find more about how to do worked examples using compound interest, then I would suggest jumping over to the investments and loan playlist, which I have put in the description, because this particular video is aimed at our year 11 and 12 students in general maths, math methods and math applications who are looking at sequences and this follows our previous video on introduction to geometric sequences so we are going to unpack a few things in this video it's going to be fairly quick we're going to look at recursion how to use the formula for compound interest and a couple of quick worked examples and then talk about what's coming up next in this series so let's kick off by recalling from our previous video on introduction to geometric sequences that the basic form for a geometric sequence is t1 equals a tn plus 1 equals tn times r. So you would remember that every recurrence relation has three parts, information about the first term t1 and then an equation where we do something to a term tn which is in the case of a geometric sequence we are multiplying that by the common ratio and that gives us the next term in the sequence. Now we use some different variables for compound interest in a recurrence relation. Instead of the first term, we kick off with V0, which is our principal, our amount at the very beginning, our value. And then to find the next one in the sequence, we're going to multiply that by R, and that will give us the next one, Vn plus 1. Now, something very important to note, R is a common ratio. It's not the same as the interest rate. In fact, we need to transform our interest rate to find R. R is going to be equal to our interest rate as a decimal per compounding period, plus one. And the reason for that is because compound interest is a situation of exponential growth. So we need to actually multiply our amount by itself plus the rate of interest. So that's something very important to note that when you're calculating R, it's simply adding one to the interest rate at per compounding period as a decimal. Let's do that in a worked example. So we've got Chloe who borrows $20,000 from the bank at 5% per annum, compounding yearly for four years to buy a car. I've kept it fairly simple with just compounding per year. All we have to do here is write this as a recurrence relation. So let's start with our basic form for a geometric sequence in this context. And we're going to add the information that we know. So firstly, we know that the principal is 20,000. So that's our value for the little letter A. It's our value for V0. And then to find the first term or the next term in the sequence, we're going to multiply the previous term by R, which is 1.05. So let's unpack that 1.05 a little bit. 5% as a decimal is 0.05. And remember I said to get R, we need to add 1. So that's why we're multiplying that by 1.05. One thing I do see students make a mistake is to multiply it by just 0.05. And what ends up happening when you do that is that your sequence decreases really significantly and really fast. You need to multiply by 1.05 because compound interest is about growth. It's a growth sequence. Our next step in here is exercise 1b. We need to actually use that recurrence relation for the next four terms. And I've talked a lot in my previous videos about how recurrence relations are great for finding a few terms, but not so great for finding well into the future. And we're going to do that shortly with our compound interest formula. So first of all, we're going to bring back our information from the previous screen. This was our recurrence relation for this situation. And we're going to use that to find V1, V2, V3, V4. They're the next four terms. Our first term is actually 20,000 that's v0 so we're going to use v0 we're going to multiply that by 1.05 and you can see that the amount owing to the bank at the end of the first year v1 is $21,000 that's what the information is telling us now we take that 21,000 and we now need to calculate 5% um, of that and add that on to the 21,000 that's what we're doing by multiplying by 1.05 and at the end of the second year we're going to owe $22,050 and so on for the next two terms in the sequence. It's always good to finish this off as well with a statement because the question doesn't ask us to find V1, 2, 3 and 4 so it's good to write a sentence the next four terms are written here below. Now that's not super useful to find all the way into the future. You'd have to write a lot of information to find out, for example, at the end of the 20th year or the 20th compounding period. So we use our general rule for compound interest, which should be on your formula sheet. It definitely is if you're in Queensland. So let's unpack a little bit about what these different variables mean. Firstly, we've got A. It's our amount 
that is owed to the bank or that the bank owes to us at the end of the loan or the investment period. Another word for A is our future value. And you'll see this a lot when you're in year 12 when we talk about future values and present values. P is our principal, the amount that we invest at the beginning or the amount that we borrow in the beginning, also known as the present value. Then we have our value for I, and this is really important. It's the interest rate as a decimal per compounding period. It's not the same as R. We don't add one to, to it this time and then add one again because the formula here for compound interest already adds the one for us. So technically speaking, what's inside those brackets is actually the variable R from our recurrence relation. And this is per compounding period. So if you've got 12 periods of compounding in a year, you'll need to divide your interest rate by 12 to get a rate per period. Or if it's month, that's if it's monthly, if it was quarterly, you'd need to divide by four. If it was daily, you'd need to divide by 365 and so on. N is our number of compounding periods in total. So it's not the number of years if it's compounded more than once a year. It's actually the number of years multiplied by the number of compounding periods in one year. So if it's compounded weekly, for example, and it's an investment for 10 years, then you're gonna be doing 10 multiplied by 52 weeks to get you your value for N. And it's really important that you recognize that this formula is different to the simple interest formula and you use it appropriately. Let's look at a worked example. Geordie's borrowing $50,000 from the bank at 12% per annum compounded monthly for 11 years to renovate his flat. Calculate how much he will owe at the end. Well, this is a perfect situation where we don't want to use a recurrence relation because we definitely don't want to be pressing the equals button on our calculator more than 100 times or writing down 100 lines of working. That would be insane. So let's use our general rule to calculate how much he will owe at the end. And in fact, that's the subject of the formula. A, it's going to tell us when we substitute everything in what we get at the end. Now, it's always important to write your formula first and then to state your variables. And this is a step that I see students skip all the time. I know it's tedious to state your variables, but there's often marks allocated for the working here, particularly calculating I and calculating N. So we firstly change the interest rate to a decimal. So that's 0 0.12. <clears throat> and then we divide it by 12 because it's compounded monthly. N is going to be 11 years multiplied by the 12 compounding periods in one year to give us 121 compounding periods in total. And now we can substitute that straight into our equation. Now I see a lot of students jump straight from there and they get an answer and write their answer down. But there are steps of working that you need to complete. And it's always a good idea to follow your order of operations, BIMDAS. Some of you may know that as BOMDAS, but a lot of people, when I ask them, what does the O stand for? They've got no idea. So that's why I like to use BIMDAS. B is brackets. We do what's in brackets first. 1 plus 0 0.01 gives us our value for R, and that's inside the brackets. And then the I for BIMDAS is our indices. So we're actually gonna take 1.01 and raise that to the power of 121 on our calculator. And that will give us the value of 3.333 and so on. And our last step, BIM, multiply. We multiply 50,000 by 3.333. So you're actually working from the right-hand side of the equation to the left-hand side of the equation. and one of the mistakes I do see when I'm tutoring students is that they don't recognize their BIMDAS and they start by doing 50,000 times 1.01 and then raising everything to the power of 121 and that's ridiculously um, crazy answer. So make sure you use your order of operations correctly. Now you can evaluate it on the calculator and write a statement. Jody will owe Geordie will owe $166,559.54 at the end. Don't round it off there unless you're asked to round to the nearest dollar because believe me, the bank will even want their 54 cents. Okay, now we're asked to find what's the interest paid in total. And we're not given a formula for this on our formula sheet. So I've got the variables from the previous page up here and we're gonna need to remember our formula A equals P plus I. Our amount that we owe at the end is equal to the amount we owe at the beginning, the principal, plus the interest that's been earned on that. So now we simply substitute the information that we've already calculated into the question, subtract 50,000 from the amount at the end, and then we get our um, interest that we've earned is $116,559.54. And once again, write that as a statement. As a statement. Now you might be wondering, hang on a minute, Geordie owes almost double what he actually borrowed in just interest alone. He has to pay back so much. That doesn't seem very logical to me. 
Well, actually, it is very logical because this is a situation of compounding, which means that we are looking at exponential growth. This amount of money that he's borrowed is going to grow into a huge amount of money over time. And that's the power of compounding. It can work for you if you're investing, but it definitely works against you if you're borrowing. So a life lesson for Geordie here, save the money first and don't borrow it from the bank if you can afford to, or perhaps borrow from somebody like your parents who may not charge you interest, hopefully. So obviously with interest, it is going to be worth a lot more at the end. You do end up having to repay far more than you borrowed. Well, let's have a quick look at what's coming up next on McClutchy Maths. We're going to look at depreciation in a geometric sequences context. We've looked at it in the, in the context of arithmetic sequences with our straight line depreciation, and we're going to look at what's called the reducing balance method of depreciation. We're going to move on then to look at some growth and decay worked examples, particularly in the context of population. And then we're going to look at some of geometric sequences for our method students in grade 11, and finally com complete the series by looking at some complex questions from our past exams. And if you're joining us this week on McClutchy Maths, thank you so much for joining us here. Why not subscribe and like the channel just like these people have done this week? We've actually had a lot more people than that, but these people have shared their names with us. So thank you very much for coming along. And why not follow us also on McClutchy Maths on Facebook? You'll get some extra tips and tricks. You can also message us there on Facebook Messenger. And another great way to contact us is through our email address, mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Now, some people try and ask questions in the actual comments for the video. Yes, I do see those questions, but sometimes it's very hard to actually communicate that information succinctly in a one-line return comment. So it's much easier if you contact me um, on email and then I can elaborate for you as you need. So once again, thank you very much for joining me here. I am so proud and pleased to be able to share my thoughts and ideas with you about how to communicate your maths and how to improve in your maths. I'm Natalie McClatchy. Have a wonderful day.